God. Thankful for his grace, thankful for his precious blood. Amen. As you're standing tonight, we certainly want to welcome uh, you to the house of the Lord. We know that God is going to bless you in a mighty way tonight. We want to say on behalf of the prayer ministry that we're uh, so grateful for everyone that comes in for pre-service prayer. Uh, your presence at pre-service prayer is making a difference. We want you to know that just you being visible and just you praying out in, uh, before the services, uh, it makes a difference in the service itself. So you change the atmosphere with your prayer. How many glad that your prayers can just impact the atmosphere? So we thank God for you. We want you to be consistent. If you haven't been consistent, just start coming out more. Amen to pre-service prayer and being a blessing. And also, we want to remind all of you to sign up for uh, the Memorial Day picnic. We need as much hands on deck as we can. We need volunteer help. So you can sign up on the app or online or in the foyer in the guest services area. Uh, we just need your help. Uh, we know you want to come and eat, but we need some folks to help. Amen. Serve too. And, uh, you know, there's a blessing in being a servant. I said, there's a blessing in being a servant. Amen. And it's better to be a servant, actually. Amen. One, one poet said, you know, the best place to be is to be a servant. That way you can't be knocked off of anything because you're already at the bottom. Glory to God. And so, you know, it's best to be a servant. And Jesus himself said, if you want to be the greatest, well, then you have to be the servant of all. All right. We're going to go to the book of Malachi tonight, chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, Malachi chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, Malachi 4, verse 1. When you found it, say amen. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. The word of the Lord reads, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, I want to talk to you tonight on this family night as we're all together from this subject, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. There is a day coming that the Bible simply calls the day of the Lord. Let's pray and ask God to help us tonight. Would you lift your hands if you have the Holy Ghost? Open your mouth. Let's talk to God together. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your precious blood and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your loving kindness to us. You've been so good to us, oh God, and we're grateful that you've allowed us to come into your house one more time. Lord God, it's because of your mercy while we're here tonight, while we're able to worship you and glorify you and exalt you and lift you up, while we're able to fellowship one with another, and while we're able to hear your word, O oh God. I pray that tonight you will deliver us from the hand of the enemy, that you would save us and heal us, sanctify us, and consecrate us to your will and to your purpose. Search us, O oh God, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. See if there be some wicked way in us. Lead us in the way everlasting. Forgive us of every sin in thought, word, or deed, or what we have left undone. Wash us with your precious blood tonight. I pray that your word, Lord God, will sanctify us tonight. Draw us closer to you, Lord. We want a, a deeper, a more intimate relationship with you. We want an authentic relationship. We don't want to be shallow, 
Lord God, we don't want to be hypocrites in the house of God. But Lord God Almighty, we want to walk uprightly before you. Lord God, let our heart be upright before you. Let our minds, Lord Jesus, be stayed on Calvary. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the enemy would be bound and gagged tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast out the devil from this place in Jesus' name. And we loose the power of the Holy Ghost now to save, heal, and deliver. Have your way, O oh God. Get the glory, get the honor, and get the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody that believes it, shout in Jesus' name. Clap your hands unto the Lord, everybody. And God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of God. I don't want to be long before you tonight. Amen. Uh, just share with you what the Holy Ghost began to lay on my heart from Malachi. I know when I said Malachi, immediately uh, folks wondered if I was going to go directly to tithing and offering because uh, usually when we say Malachi, we're going there. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. We need to reiterate the need for tithes and offering. Uh, we've got to do it. Amen. Um, but Malachi talks about a whole lot of things, as I mentioned some months ago uh, in a message. But lastly, he dealt with the day of the Lord um, in Malachi chapter 4. Now, we've got to understand that uh, as we look around us, we know we are living in the end time. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be a deep theologian to know that we're living in the last days. This is the end of the age. We believe that we're a part of the generation that will see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've heard Bishop reiterate over and over that the coming of the Lord is very near to us. It is the imminent return of Christ. We know that we're living in the end of the age, amen, because of the chaos that is in our world today. Our world is chaotic. Our world is discombobulated. Our world seems to be turned upside down. It's crazier than it's ever been. If you consider that when God shows up, he always challenges the chaos. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, the world was chaotic. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That means it was chaotic. But the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. When God shows up, order shows up. When God shows up, things that are out of place are put back in place. When God shows up, everything that is discombobulated has to be set back the way it should be. Why is this? Because God is not the author of confusion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33, Paul, wanting to set order in the church, says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So you know that if there is confusion there, God is not in it. Anything that you're involved in that is confusing and is full of confusion, that has nothing to do with God. If God is in it, it's going to be orderly. If God is in it, it's going to be decent. If God is in it, it's going to be organized. If it's confusion, then something is wrong with that. God is not the author of confusion. Confusion doesn't come from God. Confusion comes from the devil. If there's confusion in your family, it is the devil that is trying to bring confusion in your family. If there's confusion on your job, it's the devil that's trying to bring confusion on the job. If there's confusion in your marriage, it's the devil that is trying to bring confusion in the marriage. And somebody in here needs to get tired of the confusion and begin to say in the name of Jesus I rebuke the spirit of confusion that's trying to come against my mind and my family and everything around me my God the God that I serve is a God of order and so we just got to start doing things in order Jesus and the apostles described the end time here's what he said in Matthew chapter 24 uh, beginning in about verse 37 if you pull that up for me Matthew 24 verse 37 but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be two will be in the 
field, one shall be taken and the other will be left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Jesus is saying, amen, that as the days of Noah were, that's exactly how it's going to be when it's time for me to come. People are going to be confused in doing what they're doing, amen, but he's going to show up in an unexpected way. They're not going to expect that coming. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, the Apostle Paul picks up this same, uh, this same theme. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. We're watching that right now, where people are leaving church and listening to seducing spirits. People are leaving church and listening to what the devil has to say to them. Are y'all feeling this here? Amen. This is what's going on in the world today, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. In 2 Timothy, he picks it up again, amen, in chapter 3, and he says, this know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Let's see if this looks like our world today. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such Turn away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. When we read that chapter, we can just look around in our world and we can see that reality that we're living in that right now. We're living in this prophecy right now. And then there is the spirit of confusion that has been let loose in the earth. People are sexually confused. Uh, they have lost their mind in the area of perversion and sexuality. And I, I don't want you all to tighten up on me tonight as I preach along this line and worry, amen, that we should, you know, be more politically correct. This is not a politically correct pulpit. Amen. This pulpit has to preach the truth of the word of God. And if we don't preach God's word, God will hold us, amen, in contempt on that day of judgment. And I don't know about you. I need you to have a mindset that I want to be free from the blood of all men. Amen. My hands will be clean when I come before God, that you heard the word of God according to his word and not our word. But there's a spirit of confusion. There's perversion against the law of God and against the nature of God. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22, God is very clear that thou shalt not lie with mankind. If you're a man, you don't lie with a man as with womankind. He calls it abomination. He says, neither shall you lie with any beast to defile yourself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down. Notice what he calls it. He said it is confusion. The spirit of confusion is what gets a man to call himself a woman and what gets a woman to call himself a man and what gets a person to say they don't even want to be called man or woman but we want to be called by pronoun like they instead of instead of gender binary pronouns we want to be non-binary amen Demi Lovato a big uh, superstar amen a Disney superstar she became this big singer and big actress she just decided she didn't want to be a she anymore she wanted to be us and they and you couldn't call her she or or her she got offended but then she realized that she looked too much like a she to be called a they so just this week she decided that she would let people call her she and her even though she's still a they that to me sounds like confused sister you just a she you just a her glory to God you might identify as something else but you a girl y'all ain't gonna talk with me amen and a boy is just a boy we are living in a crazy world somebody in their right apostolic mind needs to stand up and call a spade a spade needs to say what the bible says is right in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and if god created them man and woman then we need to call them what they are 
I know I'm going to get in trouble here tonight. It's still all right. Amen. It's so crazy now that we've gone past just men and women. Now we have men that are marrying fictional creatures. We have men that are in, Jap in Japan, for example. Pull up that slide for me. There is this uh, gentleman here, Akihiko Kondo. That is his name. And his virtual wife, this particular girl, Hatsune Miko, is not a real girl. That is a, a virtual character he married her four years ago spent fifteen thousand dollars on the wedding to marry a virtual creature something that is in his screen y'all ain't talking back to me and he is not the only one they are called fictosexuals so we've gone from having heterosexuals to having homosexuals to now we've got fictosexuals where we've got men marrying anime uh these different manga characters if you will marrying cartoons that has been his wife, amen, for the last four years. That's not the only disturbing part of this, but this particular girl that he married is actually a 16-year-old pop character. So he's 34 and she's 16. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody in here needs to st say, stop the madness. Somebody in here needs to stand up and say, come on, God is real. The devil is a liar. Let God be true. He married a 16-year-old fictional character. And that uh, fictional character has been on tour. She's a pop star. She's been on tour with Lady Gaga. But she's been married for four years. Well, just this week, his marriage is on the rocks because somehow the computer program is, is malfunctioning. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And he is unable to connect with her this week. So he's going through a rough time. And he needs counseling. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I tell you what he needs. He needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He needs somebody to talk some sense into him he needs somebody to tell him the day of the lord coming y'all pray for the preacher today amen we're living in a virtual matrix pull up the next slide amen now uh, hallelujah this guy mark zuckerberg who gave you facebook and some of you in here have facebook facebook instagram uh and then all the different social media that comes out of it well facebook has now renamed itself it's now called meta and the reason it's called meta is it's building the matrix it's building the metaverse you're looking at mark zuckerberg who is looking at an avatar of himself he He's looking at himself in the metaverse. The metaverse is the virtual world that your children will go to school in. Y'all not talking yet, but, but you have to understand COVID did something. What COVID did was it put people in homes and said we have to do stuff from home that normally would be done in a schoolroom and normally would be done at the workplace. Many of you work remotely right now and you dread the idea of even going back to the office because you like to work from the house. I wish I had some real folks. Hey, Amen. You don't even want to go back up in there. It's better working from home, you know, but COVID is kind of moving. We're putting you back in the house, putting you out back in the workplace. But when we started to go home, kids had to learn from home. So what they're doing now is they're making it so immersive that it's no different than just being in the place at the same time. Amen. So the metaverse, you put on uh, your virtual reality headset and immerse yourself into virtual reality where you can see people and talk to people and have meetings and go to school and go to class and work on different things together and not only that you can drink together you can party together and you can have relationships with each other through your avatar you can meet people at the bar y'all ain't saying nothing you can go to concerts and and hook up with the girl y'all ain't saying nothing what they're doing now they've got the type of technology to put the next slide up so that they're building exoskeletons that go on your body so when you put the virtual head set on you can feel everything like you were just right there with the person so if you're riding a horse you can feel what it is to ride the horse or if you hug somebody or if you kiss somebody or if you enter into some sort of perversion with somebody you can feel it look at this the next slide all of these are exoskeletons that they're building pull the next slide up if you can glory to God they're putting it on bodies where we're going into virtual warfare where we're fighting even in the metaverse the next slide all of this to teach your children to train them we're using this technology now in the kindergarten we use it in elementary school we use it in middle school we use it in high school we use it in college and we want to sit up in church and act like everything's okay and act like we just can just have you know there's a little bit of Pentecostal power no the devil is a liar what we need is we need to stand up and say God we need you to show up with your power 
We need the Holy Ghost to be poured out now. We need to bind some devils in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to believe that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Somebody needs to believe with me tonight that we can cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and we can bring every thought in captivity amen to Christ Jesus. I know we need technology. I'm not anti-technology. I'm not anti-science but I'm saying we need to wake up apostolic church and recognize recognize that they're using this stuff not just for education but they're using it for perversion and the blood of Jesus is against the spirit of perversion the blood of Jesus is against every demonic spirit that's trying to trap our children and I see some of you tonight amen you're so tired and so weary you don't know that the devil is trying to wear you out but I wish you would get up in the Holy Ghost and I wish you would break every chain with your praise I wish you would open your mouth and shout hallelujah I wish you would give God the glory and say I will not let the spirit of the age and the spirit of lethargy make me sit down and shut up I'm looking for some apostolic folks tonight. I'm looking for some Holy Ghost prayer warriors tonight. I'm looking for some folks that know that Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And you know you got to do something before it's too late. And you're not going to drink the Kool-Aid. You're not going to let them poison you. You're not going to let them murder you. I wish I had some parents who said, I'm not going to let you just take my children away from me right in my house. So I'm telling you that the day of the Lord is a real thing. This confusion that you see here is not going to last forever. God has a day marked off on his calendar to put everything in order. God's not going to let this go on in perpetuity. So firstly, the day of God's judgment is already set. Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31. God just gave me three quick things for you. Acts chapter 17, 30 to 31, if you could pull that scripture up for me. The day of the judgment of God is already set. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Notice, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. Jesus is coming back and the world will be judged by Jesus himself. In our text in Malachi, it describes the day of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4 verses 1 to 2. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi began to warn the people that there was coming a day that would burn like fire. As a matter of fact, before he even got into chapter 4, Malachi chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, he's a little bit more clear on that day. He says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. And like a fuller soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. That's why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God says this day, and of course it has 
multiple applications here. The first application was the coming of Jesus the first time. He was saying that John the Baptist would come before he would show up. But it also has a secondary application to his second coming. When he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I want you to notice that he, he singles out certain kinds of sin that he's going to deal with specifically. He says, I'm going to deal with sorcery. That is, any kind of witchcraft, occultism, tarot card reading, New Ageism, Eastern mysticism, any kind of black magic or white magic, Ouija boards, Hindu uh, practices, any kind of astrology and horoscopes, anybody that delves into that kind of stuff, God says, I'm going to deal with that. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18, here's how God feels about witchcraft. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Y'all better hear this preacher tonight. God's giving me a warning tonight. Amen. Coming out of Malachi. In Isaiah chapter 47, beginning in verse 12, God says, Stand now with your enchantments and with the multitude of your sorceries wherein thou hast labored from your youth. If so be, you shall be able to profit, if, if be that thou mayest prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of thy counselors. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at nor fire to sit before it. God says, I'm going to wipe out any kind of sorcery that exists in the earth. Any kind of witchcraft that exists in the earth, God said, I'm going to deal with that witchcraft. God said, I'm going to deal with adulteries. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, he was very plain. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And of course, he's dealing not just with natural adultery. He's dealing with spiritual adultery. Because if you put anything before God, that's spiritual adultery. Any kind of idolatry is spiritual adultery. New life. We must never put anything before the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever idol tries to rise up in our house, in our heart, we need to tear down that idol in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything that tries to get in the way of our relationship with God, anything that's blocking our praise, anything that's blocking our worship, anything that's blocking our consecration, we need to burn it up in the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. All unholiness and unrighteousness and impurity, we've got to get rid of it. Lying has got to go. God said, I'm going to deal with false swearers. Notice Proverbs chapter 6, amen, verses 16 to 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. He says, I hate a proud look. I hate a lying tongue. Hands that, are, that shed innocent blood. Heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to running, running to mischief. Amen. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sows discord among brethren. God hates these things. Amen. We've got to stop anything that would, would try to break the unity of the church. Anything that tries to bring division into the house of God. Anybody that's messy. God says you're an abomination. Come on here somebody. We need to rebuke messiness in the name of Jesus. We need to rebuke discord in the name of Jesus. We need to rebuke a lying tongue. Hallelujah. We need to rebuke the false witness. If somebody comes to you with some news about somebody, amen, you need to say the devil is a lie. I'm not receiving anything that I don't know about. Let me call them myself and find out for myself. I don't want that secondhand information because it could be something just as designed to make me not like you and you not like me. But brothers and sisters, come on. We need each other. God said, I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to judge it. Are you hearing the preacher today? Amen. God said we shouldn't oppress people and take work from them that we don't pay them for. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 14 to 15. God is very big on fairness. You shall not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of your brethren or of the strangers that are in the land within thy gate. So don't do it to church people and don't do it to sinners. Amen. Don't keep back money that belongs to them. Give them their hire for the day. Don't let the sun go down upon it. In other words, have a good reputation with your brethren and your sisters and have a good reputation as a child of God so that we can be a witness to the world. God said, I'm going to deal with a certain kind of attitude. He called it the sins of Sodom. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 to 50. Here's what the Bible said. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Listen, listen. I, I used to think it was just homosexuality. No, it was bigger than that. It was just a part of it. Pride was there. Fullness of bread. Abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughter. 
waters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and of the needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I don't want God to have to move any of us. We need to be upright before the Lord. We need to say, God, I want to be walking in such a way that ple- is there anybody in the building that can lift your hand and say, God, I just want to please you in the way I talk, in the way I live, in the way I think, in the way I walk. I don't want anything, amen, to pull me out of the house of God. That day is coming. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Listen what the apostle says. The day of the Lord will come, notice, as a thief in the night. In other words, when people don't expect it, that's when the day is going to come. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein, notice, shall be burned up. All our nice cars burned up. Every nice house burned up. All these pretty places that we, we see around us burned up. Pretty clothes, money, all the things that people run after. God said, one day I'm going to set it all on fire. In one moment, everything is going to explode. It's going to be a big explosion. It's going to be a day unlike any other. So secondly, I want you to know it will be a day of deliverance for saints and a day of judgment for the wicked. A day of deliverance for saints and a day of judgment for the wicked. Consider again Malachi chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Bishop always talks about wanting to go to heaven. Amen. And uh, the Apostle Paul had the same kind of mindset. He said, I have a desire to, de- to depart and be with Christ. And he said it was far better, not just better. He said it was far better. The reason why no one says amen when you say that, Bishop, is because after that he says, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Amen. And so glory to God, Paul had to abide in the flesh for as long as the Lord wanted him to be there. But can I tell you, saints of God, amen, that that day will be a day of rejoicing for the saint, but it will be a day of terror for the wicked. It will be a day where the saint will give God the glory. A saint will be shouting to God. According to Jesus again in Matthew chapter 24 verse 40 to 41. It says that two will be in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. That means two people could be driving in their car and one is going to disappear out of that car and the other person is going to be left in that car. And they're going to turn around and look for that that person that disappeared. The person that disappeared made their calling and election sure but at other person that is still there they were left behind some folks are going up when the trumpet sounds and some folks are going to be left behind brothers and sisters I don't want to be left behind somebody in here need to wave your hand and say I refuse to be left behind we could be in church y'all ain't talking back to me and half the church could go up and another half of the church still here amen I'm not going to be sticking around with the folk that are still shouting down here oh no I want when the trumpet sounds, talk back to me, church, that I'm singing on the streets of gold. I want to be with the Lord in the air. I don't want to be sitting beside somebody and somebody go and I'm here. The devil is a liar. I've got to go. You can stay, but I've got to go. The Bible says, and I'm hurrying, amen, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He says, for saints of God, don't be too worried about uh, the day of the Lord. Don't be too concerned about it. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And this Antichrist, the man of sin, be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God is going to be sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's going to sit in God's temple and claim to be God. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time amen for 
the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. As long as the Holy Ghost is here, as long as the church is here, the Antichrist can't just come on the scene and do what he wants to do. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Listen at it. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Look at this word now. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God himself is going to allow some people to be deluded so that he can destroy them on that day. And the reason he's going to send them delusion is because when the preaching came forth, Forth, they wouldn't receive it when there was a chance to receive the truth they didn't want to receive it they rejected the truth when it was coming church I don't ever want to be in church and the man of God is preaching the word of God and I don't want to receive it I'm pushing against it I'm pushing back on it because my flesh doesn't want to receive it we need to curse our flesh in the name of Jesus we need to tell this flesh you're gonna sit down and you're gonna do what God's word said to do amen you need to tell your flesh you're gonna repent today you're gonna get right with God because when Jesus comes you don't want to be left behind I want to be the kind of man that when the preaching is going on I can say amen I can say preach it to me preacher I want you to preach it straight I don't want you to put anything on it I don't want you to sugarcoat it I don't want you to pretty it up to make me feel good I don't need anything to scratch my ears I don't have itching ears come on here somebody I don't want to water down the apostolic message it's still one God whose name is Jesus it's still Acts 2 38 as the only way of salvation is still holiness or hell we need to still preach holiness we need to still preach separation from the world I'm wondering if we can't get anybody to shout anymore over holiness. I can get folk to shout, amen, over 10 steps to getting rich, five steps to getting a million dollars, 12 steps for your relationship, and that's all people want. Just tell me something how I can get my relationships right. What, 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 what good is your relationship going to do you if you're going to bust hell wide open, if you're on your way to the lake of fire? It's better to get yourself right with God and say, God, tear down down all the strongholds that are in my life that don't please you if there's lust in there I got to get it out if there's lying in there I've got to get it out if there's malice in there I've got to get it out if there's unforgiveness in there I want God to clean it out because when the trumpet sounds I want to be ready to go the same Thessalonians got a different picture from Paul. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Amen. And I'm watching the time. But notice what it says in verse 13. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. But we believe that Jesus died and rose from the grave. Even, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord when we hear those words that should be the reason we dance if you want to know when you should shout if you want to know when you should be the happiest is church is when you start hearing about Jesus coming when you start hearing about the glorified body you're going to get when you start hearing about the streets of gold you should start shouting at that point you should you should start dancing at that I know it's all right to hear about when you get a house you can rejoice for that amen but how about the mansion that you're going to get in glory when you start hearing about the mansion in glory you need to forget about the house you have here and say God there's something better coming there's something greater coming oh hallelujah I'm watching the time so I'm doing pretty good amen with the time tonight revelation chapter 21 verse 1 glory to God I'm not going over time with you tonight revelation 21 beginning in verse 1 this is for you if you're saved and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great 
voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and I love verse 4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away saints uh, even though God can bless us down here there's still sorrow there's still dying there's still pain there's still sickness but there's coming a day when we're going to be a part of something glory to God where God himself is going to wipe away every tear from your eye have you been crying have you been dealing with the spirit of depression I come to rebuke the spirit of depression and tell you to put on the garment of praise because God is saying I'm going to wipe away every tear from your eye have you had to cry because you lost a loved one God is saying there's coming a day when nobody will die anymore when nobody will be sick anymore well you have joy can you imagine God himself coming over to you and wiping away all the tears from your eyes I'm talking about God being intimate I'm talking about God right there I'm talking about God being imminent I don't know how you feel about it Revelation chapter 22 and verse 1. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And the other side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manners of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were from the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and the servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads I mean I want Jesus' name in my forehead I don't want the mark of the beast in my forehead I want Jesus' name in my forehead hallelujah his name shall be in their foreheads and there shall be no night there and they don't need a candle you won't need a flashlight we won't need any electricity y'all not talking to me neither light of the sun we won't even need the solar system y'all not saying nothing we won't need the biggest star our star is the sun you won't even need that glory to God for the Lord God giveth them light amen and he they shall reign forever and ever I want to be a part of this you can keep everything down here if I can be a part of this which leads me to my last point amen Malachi said that the spirit of Elijah always precedes the coming of the Lord amen Malachi again chapter 4 Verse 5 to 6, here's what he says. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Once again, the primary application of that scripture, of course, is that John the Baptist would come in the spirit of Elijah before the coming of Jesus. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus alluded to this in Matthew chapter 11, beginning in about verse 12, talking about John the Baptist. He said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And he said, listen to Jesus, if you will receive it, this is the Elijah, Elias, which was for to come. So Jesus said, John the Baptist fulfilled this Elijah role. When John the Baptist came, he even dressed like Elijah. His personality was a lot like Elijah. Amen. But what is the spirit of Elijah? When I talk about the spirit of Elijah, what I'm dealing with is the ministry of Elijah, which was very specific. The ministry of Elijah is always a ministry of repentance. Whenever Elijah shows up, he's always trying to bring order out of chaos. Whenever Elijah shows up, he is rebuilding things that have been broken down. In particular, he's rebuilding the altar of God that has been broken down. And he's always challenging whatever the prevailing spirit is of the age. For example, when Elijah showed up, Jezebel had instituted Baal worship on a very high level so that the entire nation with Ahab the king was locked in this Baal worship. And Elijah came and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If Jehovah is God, serve Jehovah. And if Baal is God, serve Baal. So whenever a spirit of Elijah shows up, amen, you know that there's an urgency in the atmosphere. Elijah is always going to call people back to repentance. Elijah is always going to call the church 
back to repentance. Why? Because that means Jesus is coming. Whenever you hear more messages about the coming of the Lord, whenever you hear this pulpit start to light up with get right, get right, get right. It means that we're getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is about to show up. Revelation chapter 22 again and verse 12. Jesus says, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Man, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without, if you don't get in this, outside are only dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth say come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. Amen. And then John says, even so, come Lord Jesus. I want you to know that this passage is warning the church at the end of the Bible that Jesus says, I'm coming and I'm going to reward you based on how you lived, based on what you did with what I was saying to you. The spirit of Elijah is always going to tell you to repent. When the preacher says to repent, it means that God is about to show up in a real way. I feel in the Holy Ghost to tell this church that we're getting ready to see unprecedented revival and unprecedented harvest and unprecedented increase. Jesus is about to show himself strong in the behalf of the righteous. But I want you to know that what God is saying to us is the reason that this harvest is coming is because the second coming of the Lord is very near and he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle and if we're going to have the kind of revival that God wants us to have we're going to have to come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing I want you to know as I'm standing in this pulpit today that the Holy Ghost has sent me on assignment tonight for those in this church that will say you know what I want to experience everything that God has for me I want to walk into the spirit amen and the power of almighty God I want to see miracle signs and wonders is there anybody here that wants to see the supernatural in a real way? Is there anybody that wants to go out of the mundane and just doesn't want to have church as usual? Remember at the beginning of the year, we said no more church as usual. But there's a spirit of slumber, a spirit of lethargy, a spirit of same old, same old that tries to come into the church of God. It tries to sit on you and tries to block you from being what God called you to be. It tries to shut your mouth. It tries to block your praise. It tries to steal your joy it tries to bring you into depression when you should be walking in authority it tries to make you a child again when you should have put away childish things it's trying to pull you back into what God delivered you from trying to bring you back into sin trying to bring you back into iniquity one of my daughters said this week uh, the devil tried to tempt her but she saw the temptation coming and she said in the name of Jesus uh, I'm not going down that road again I'm not going down that depression again I'm not going down that place again is there anybody in the building that says, oh yes, I'm tired of the devil just walking in and out of my house doing what he wants to do with my life. I'm tired of Satan just messing with my family, messing with my finances, messing with my children, messing with my marriage, messing with my family. If that's you, I wish you would say, devil, tonight is the night where you're going to have to loose everything that belongs to me. The day of the Lord is coming and I want to make sure, amen, that everything is in in order. I want my house to be in order. I want my life to be in order. I'm going to give God a show enough praise. Is there anybody in the building that says I'm not going to stay quiet anymore? Devil, you shut my mouth long enough. Can I 
tell you the trick of the enemy uh, is to keep some of you quiet uh, and to keep you sitting down uh, and to keep you depressed uh, because the Bible said uh, the joy uh, of the Lord uh, is your strength uh, and if you don't have any joy uh, you don't have any strength uh, well how do you get joy uh, I'll tell you how to get joy uh, in his presence uh, there is fullness of joy uh, and at his right hand uh, there are pleasures forevermore uh, well how uh, do I get in his presence uh, come before his presence with singing uh, enter his gates uh, with thanksgiving uh, and come before his presence with singing uh, again it says uh, that the Lord inhabits uh, the praises uh, of his people uh, what's stopping you uh, from shouting hallelujah tonight uh, what's stopping you uh, from waving your hands uh, what's stopping you uh, from shouting for joy uh, what's stopping you from giving God the glory I'm going to tell you what's stopping you. There's an intimidation spirit. There's a spirit of Jezebel. There's a wicked spirit that wants to shut you down. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Because wherever the spirit of Elijah shows up, the spirit of Jezebel shows up. And Jezebel always sends a threat to Elijah to tell Elijah, you better shut up or I'm going to cut your throat. You better shut up. That devil wants us to shut up. He wants wants this preacher to shut up he wants the pulpit to shut up he wants us to preach some mamby pamby little patty cake preaching that doesn't move you out of sin so you can sit there resting in the devil but I come to defy that spirit tonight in the mighty name of Jesus and I need about 10 radical people that'll help me tonight that'll say devil you're not gonna keep us quiet you're not gonna shut our mouth you're not gonna sit us down you're not gonna kill us you're not gonna shed our blood here I'm coming for you devil we're coming for the false prophets we're coming from the prophets of Baal and we're shutting them down in the name of Jesus God said I'm gonna send my messenger before I come can I tell you that that spirit is in this room tonight I need some of y'all Amen to lift your hands and get radical tonight. I need some of you to move out of complacency. I need some of you to begin to worship God in spirit and in truth. I need some of you to forget about the fact that it's one minute after nine o'clock and say, no, I'm not leaving out of this church tonight the same way I came in. I'm sick and tired of the status quo. I'm sick and tired of the devil running roughshod. I need somebody to kick the enemy in the head tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody pull out the sword of the spirit. Somebody said depression, you got to go. Suicide, you got to go. Perversion, you got to go. Hallelujah, we stand everywhere in the building. I'm quitting right now, but I need somebody to open your mouth as loud as you can and tell the devil, get out of my job. Get out of my house. Take your hands off my children. Take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my future. Take your hands off my ministry. All you preachers in here, you letting the devil keep you quiet. It's time for you to open your mouth. All you prayer warriors in the building, you've been silent for too long. Where are the prayer warriors? Where are the people of God? Where are the mighty ones? Hallelujah. Why are you on the sideline? I come to call you back to repentance. I come to call you back to the place of prayer. Where are the Davids in the house that would dance before the Lord? Where are the Esthers in the house? Why has it taken you so long for you to go before the king and petition on behalf of the church? Why are you talking about all that's wrong in the church? When's the last time you got down and prayed for what was wrong in the church? How about you fix it in prayer? How about you praise your way through it? How about you change the atmosphere? Is the service heavy? Well, why don't you lift your hands then? Why don't you glorify God then? Do you feel that there's something out of order? Well, why don't you connect to God and say, God, I'm not going to leave here until everything that's out of order gets back in order. Everything that's not right. 
Come on, Sister Hernisha. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to praise him? Come on, Sister Simon. Why don't you shout hallelujah? Why don't you magnify God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, Mother Condry. Hallelujah. All the mothers need to worship God. All the women, the, the wailing women. Where are the women, hallelujah, that will wail before God? Woe to them that are in ease in Zion tonight. We rebuke the spirit of ease and we say, let God have his way. Oh, I want to go on. Musicians, you can come. But I wish somebody would get out of your pew and join these that are down here at the altar. I wish some of you would just lift your hands as you're coming and say, God, I need it to be in order. I need things to get in order. I need things to be set right. Haneboshaya. Is there witchcraft coming against us? Hallelujah. Why don't you reverse the curse tonight? Some of you need to reverse the curse tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Why don't you dispatch those angels? Those angels that God has assigned to you. Why don't you let those ministering angels move through this sanctuary? Move into every house. Move, hallelujah, into every family. Move, glory to God. Hallelujah, till your children are freed from the hand of the enemy. Lift your voice in here tonight. Lift your voice in here tonight. Lift your voice in here tonight. Don't leave here the same way you came. That's it, sir. This man traveled from a whole other state to come to Tampa because he wanted to be in a real apostolic church. Him and his wife and his baby are up here at the altar crying now. Come on, new life. You need to be what God called you to be. Get up out of whatever grave the devil tried to put you in. Get up. Rebuke the spirit of Baal. Rebuke that Ashtoreth spirit. Rebuke that demon that's trying to destroy you. Rebuke that spirit of Babylon. Let's be the church of the living God. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. We've got to get ready.